Hi, this is Luke Zip from Crocker Farm Auction, and I'm here with three very rare examples of early Baltimore stoneware that we're going to be offering in our spring 2021 stoneware and redware auction. Uh, so all three examples bear very rare maker's marks. And, you know, so I've been researching Baltimore stoneware for over 20 years now, and it's, it's very fascinating and stunning Baltimore because there's very significant stoneware manufactories in that city. It really was the style center for stoneware production in the American South. But for whatever reason, potters didn't mark their wear with any frequency. Really, it wasn't until almost the Civil War where potters were marking their wear with frequency. And it was really just one potter, Peter Herman. And he wasn't really a great uh, standard bearer for the city. Uh, so a lot of my research has uh, amounted to finding very few marked examples and then attributing a large body of work from those marked examples. So pieces like this are very important to researching and studying Baltimore stoneware. Uh, I'll start with the example on the right. That bears the, the maker's stamp, Baltimore Union Stoneware Manufactory. Uh, and I was extremely excited. It wasn't even that long ago when I discovered uh, what this pottery was for. It was for the partnership of, it was Michael Grube and I think John Kilmer was the, the other potter uh, in Baltimore at a pottery uh, in the Otterbein neighborhood right near Baltimore's Camden Yards uh, Stadium. And that partnership only existed from 1808 to 1810. And that's extremely significant because that period predates uh, really what we consider the start of Baltimore stoneware production as we know it, which was the start of the War of 1812 and the arrival of Henry Remy uh, from Manhattan, bringing the technological uh, influence that he did to the stoneware potter's craft. So really the two decades of stoneware production before Remy, there isn't a whole lot known other than documentary evidence and uh, assurance from under the ground. The surviving examples are virtually non-existent other than those pieces that came down in potter's families. So pieces bearing this mark uh, are really significant in attributing a large body of work to pre-Henry Emery arrival in Baltimore. This mark actually, um, you know, and I'll, I'll give some credit to my twin brother Mark here, uh, he, in his analysis, he realized this is the earliest maker's mark in the American South on stoneware, Baltimore Union Stoneware Manufactory. So it's really important. And this jar shows, it's interesting to see that this jar form, this ovoid jar form with these uh, tab handles, that shows up in Baltimore stoneware later, like in this jar, which I'll talk about. But it shows that the Quaker stoneware potters in Baltimore before Remy's arrival were using that jar form. Uh, you can see they knew their place in the market. They didn't really understand how to fire a stoneware kiln. So they, uh, you know, the, this is the local Baltimore clay, but fired as they knew how to fire it. So it, it's an uneven firing. And oftentimes, the earliest Baltimore potters would undecorate their stoneware or they would use iron oxide, which was way cheaper than cobalt oxide, which is a rust solution. You see it often on that English style stoneware, just a dip. This actually has some cobalt oxide around this one handle in particular and over the maker's stamps. And then oftentimes early Baltimore stoneware had the tooled rings at the top. So this is the first one. Again, there's only maybe about five examples known. And this is the only intact large jar form known from Baltimore Union Stoneware Manufactory. This example bears the maker's mark of H.R. Marshall. And Marshall, uh, Hugh Marshall, worked with uh, the brothers William and Thomas Amos in Baltimore. Uh, he worked at their pottery, I believe and he was running their pottery. There's one ad we were able to discover. He was running their pottery uh, around the time of Thomas Amos' death in Henrico County, Virginia. So I believe uh, William probably uh, you know, was preoccupied with settling his brother Thomas's affairs, so Hugh Marshall was running that pottery 
in Baltimore. It's very rare to find an example that bears his maker's mark, I believe. Again, maybe there's about five known of his as well. But it's a well-potted jar, typical English-style form with a rolled collar. There's his maker's mark on the front, a two-gallon capacity mark, and then these slip-trailed dots. Marshall, shortly after this, um, towards the end of the decade, arrived in Fredericksburg, Virginia, and started a factory there, uh, which is very significant as well. And archaeological evidence of his work there shows a very significant operation. This example bears the uh, stamp Ernest and Coles, and it's from the uh, Merchant Partnership of George Ernest and his uh, son-in-law, Wesley Coles, in Baltimore, in the uh, Canton neighborhood around there, along right near the harbor. And they were merchants who made stoneware to market it widely up and down the eastern seaboard. And so they, they used their location, their influence as China merchants, uh, and their, their uh, easy access to the Baltimore Harbor to really manufacture and market Baltimore stoneware very, very widely. This little jar, you can see it's very similar in form actually kind of a combination of these two forms. It has a rolled collar and then a nice ovoid form with the tab handles. Very typical to uh, Baltimore stoneware forms. The decoration is actually similar to what you would find at either David Parr or Elisha Parr's pottery in Baltimore. And because it was merchant owned, they employed potters uh, from all over. So I'm sure those potters had experience at one of the Parr potteries. But it's very unusual to find a signed Ernest and Cole's piece as well, maybe, I don't know, six or seven examples known. So these are all very rare, very significant, and actually came from three different consigners. This showed up in the Midwest. This showed up on the West Coast, I believe. Uh, and then this showed up, I think, originally in Texas. So I guess that's testament to Baltimore stoneware potters marketing their wear widely and then also people traveling. But we're thrilled to offer them in our spring 2021 stoneware and redware auction.